This is a historic day where Andy Murray has won the Wimbledon Championship in the UK and even more historic than that I'm getting to the end of this 6mm uh, project or at least the first phase of it where I'm getting all of these uh, vehicles done and out of the way. So here you have one of my command bases. I've done four of these and uh, they were inspired by the Future War Commander game where the command bases can be slightly larger and in the game itself the command models are abstracted a little so it doesn't matter that uh, the bases are a little bit larger you can make a little mini diorama of them to make the uh, your army look a bit more interesting so I did four different ones using a, a plastic base so you've got another one there where there's some plastic card on there as well some games workshop uh, sprue but when I say sprue it's from the epic sprues where they did these little ruins oh, I need to come back a bit further that's a Games Workshop model. This is a Ground Zero Games model. I just spin that around. Unless I didn't spend hours and hours painting these uh, to perfection. There are just a couple of shades of highlighting on there and some washes and a little decal on the uh, flag. The reason I like these Games Workshop Epic plastic models that's metal but this is plastic is because they have these sort of banners and flags and I thought that looked suitable for a command base so you can see again on here on this one it's got a little banner on the top and I put a, again a decal on there just painted it kind of an off-white uh, this is a piece of metal from Ralph Arthur uh, a bit of a spaceship or something which I've just done as an old piece of debris on there and again the um, sprue piece from the epic range from Games Workshop. Just show you all three of these that I've got. There's another one with the banner, the same banner holder and a, this is like a, I was going to use this as a kind of a mash unit uh, base. So this will may get glued on there, I might magnetize it on there. That's the mag, uh, mash unit from uh, iron wind metals or it's from the uh, FASA older range as well so it just adds a little bit of interest like a mini diorama really and you can do that in the epic scale uh, if that was obviously glued on there nicely I'd pull the whole thing up in one go uh, this larger one which has the large sort of plastic card space on that side sort of concrete platform I was going to do this command HQ I was going to go on there either that way around or the other way around and again the whole thing together looks like quite a nice diorama piece oh yeah and the final fourth base sort of has a supply look to it so I've just put a barrel on there oh, there's a little bit of hair on the end of that and um, some more plastic card to make it look like this. It's kind of a strip on there. So I'm not sure what to put on there. So I have this Long Tom cannon, which is again from the Battletech sort of universe. Um, that sort of fits on there quite nicely. Um, but it's less of a command piece. It's more sort of artillery, isn't it, obviously? And um, this, which is a moon bus from Comet Miniatures, before you all start screaming and saying, who makes those? Who makes those? It's from Comet Miniatures in the UK, and I think they made them in the in the 80s actually. It's kind of probably more seven or eight mil scale actually, but it does, you know, it works fine I think for six mil, and um, looks like quite an interesting sort of dropship command uh, unit. I haven't gone to town like I normally do with the sort of gradiated blue uh, visors and things. Uh, sorry, cockpits, but. Uh, I decided to just go for the matte black. Okay, so in the last video I took you through the dry brushing I was doing on these bases which got me to this sort of stage that you can see on here with a little wash of the red um, Vietnam War dust which has gone in there as well to give it a kind of reddish look to the earth and that's resulted in 
basically all of the um, tank vehicles being complete. If I can bring this over here, I'll get this into focus as well. Apologies for the moment of momentary lack of focus. So again, come out a little bit further. Here we go. So you can see that on top of this earth I've used little earth colours, I've used static glass, grass clumps and also a very fine static grass which looks a lot smaller than the, the normal stuff that you'd use on a 28mm model and then just sort of blends in quite nicely on these bases. So that's the kind of result I went for. Here's the sort of finished products including my bin. Try and get them to a point where it looks like they're in focus. There we go. So you can see I've got a range of sci-fi and um, traditional GHQ modern vehicles in there. And they've all had that base work done where you can see I've not covered up completely the uh, earth colours but I've sort of spot put on some of that static grass. So I'll just show you how I did that because I've um, finally got myself to the end of having uh, completed these uh, which that will need to come back into focus again almost yes so as you can see I haven't put any of the clumps or static grass on these and that's because they've just been dull coated in the last few hours with a tester spray lacquer and I do that before putting the static grass on because if you do it afterwards the um, the lacquer can get all sti sticky especially when it's on this very fine static grass and these are the clump pieces I've used and you can see they've come out of a sheet of which I've got some here so you can see what it looks like and I've actually used a hole punch you can vaguely see the holes in there that hole punch then punches out the little round discs which are the right size for the sort of 6mm scale so in terms of doing that the next bit I tend to put these clumps on first and then the the larger bits of static grass I decant out some super glue I'm just using this sort of runny super glue Loctite you can use any type of super glue really and uh, one of these plastic spatulas that you can actually take the the glue comes off afterwards so it doesn't stick on there and allows you to sort of spread it around so I might take a little dab, go up against the edge here, and there's a little spread of super glue in that place. And then the impossible task, where I could use a pair of tweezers, but it's it's just as tricky to use your um, fingers. But I'll tweeze them on there. Okay, so there's a tiny clump that I've picked up. There's the glue and. There's nothing clever going on here. So that's nicely uh, now on. And I've lost my glue stick on the floor. Great. But um, I have another one to hand, luckily. And for some reason a cold is attacking me right at this very moment. So then with the, uh, the glue stick again. Sorry about that vibration. I just spread a bit more around in certain areas where I think there might be some useful areas for some grass so up against rocks and things where water might uh, form I'm not being really geographically accurate with this but uh, it's nice to spread some around on there some up on the hillside some up around the the base there. And again this cleans off afterwards this plastic stick so you can reuse it every time it's just a handy way. Other methods are of course a cocktail stick for spreading the super glue on. And there you go.
it's not very easy doing it on camera. I like to spread some around the clumps as well so it blends the clumps in slightly. So I think that will do. A little bit there. Get this out of the way and uh, make a little bit more extra room up here. You can see I keep my static grass in a large plastic jar. So if I move this out of the way, excuse that, pick it back up, hopefully not by a super glue section, and uh, at this point the whole thing goes in and gets dipped in and coated in uh, static grass in those various places. Of course I've got to get it on top inside there as well, and over the back. Uh, not the best thing to view online, but there you go. You can see where it's gone on. Now what I'm going to do off camera, after I've tapped it a few times, is I'm going to aim the other way into the room and I'm going to blow the uh, excess off, which also causes the static grass to stand on end. So here we go. So now if I just get my system back up in line again, you can see, if I lift it up, you can see where the grass has gone on in a kind of subtle way to blend in. So there you go, static grass. And I'll not stick this back on at the moment because um, if I do it could get stuck down on the glue. And uh, I may actually go back on with a couple more clumps on there, but at the moment I'm quite happy with the sort of realism of that. And you can see again some of the other bases I've uh, finished that on. Particularly again there, you can see how I use the clump and then use some static grass near it, and it just tends to blend the whole thing in. And on this one, just to keep them bled, to, to keep the mix up, I've actually not used any clumps, I've just used the static grass. Okay, that's it. I'll keep it short and sweet. Thanks very much for listening in and uh, I'll do another update very soon.